Anyone who witnesses violence is a victim of violence. Love is a choice. Love is the willingness to work on our relationships, even though it is hard work sometimes. Love also involves courage because when we love another person, we risk losing that person. He or she could reject us or die. Self-awareness is the foundation for EQ because it allows us to have self-controlled and to differentiate between perceptions, thinking, feelings, and desires. The ability to think before reacting allows people to find a balanced response in interpersonal relationships. People who are self-aware have made their unconscious wounds conscious and therefore can take responsibility for them. This consciousness of wounds from the past allows each partner in a marriage to resist dumping old garbage on each other. Shame is a sickness of the soul. It is the most poignant experience of the self by the self, whether felt in humiliation or cowardice, or in a sense of failure to cope successfully with challenge. Shame is a kind of self-murder. Internalized, shame is characterized by a kind of psychic numbness that becomes the foundation for a kind of living death. Forged in the matrix of our source relationships, shame conditions every other relationship in our lives. Shame destroys self-esteem. Shame is the heart of our wound and differs greatly from the feeling of guilt. Guilt says I've done something wrong. Shame says there's something wrong with me. Guilt says I've made a mistake. Shame says I am a mistake. Guilt says what I did wasn't good. Shame says I am no good. The difference is distinct and profound. Functional families are created by parents who are in touch with their healthy shame. Shame is an innate human emotion. Its function is to signal our human limits, our finitude. Our humanity is rooted in limits. To be human is to make mistakes, to need help, and to know that there is something greater than ourselves, some higher power. Healthy shame is an essential component of our humanness. Awareness of limits is necessary to our psychological balance. Shame is our primary human boundary. When we lose our healthy sense of shame, we lose our boundaries and our shame becomes toxic. We then try to be more than human shameless or less than human shameful. Children's needs are insatiable in the sense that they need their parents continuously throughout childhood. Children need their parents to be there for them. Abandoned children have no one there for them. Children may even have to take care of their parents. The preciousness and uniqueness every human child possess are destroyed through abandonment. The child is alone and alienated. This abandonment creates a shame-based inner core. Persistence is the ability to continually motivate oneself. It seems to be based on optimism. People who are self-motivated have the ability to be optimistic in the face of setbacks. They see some positive value in the mistakes they make. They are able to create new fantasies that offer real alternatives to the choices or inabilities that led to their setback. Social deafness is the ability to manage interpersonal relationships well. Social deafness allows one to get along well with others and to motivate other people. The more functional a family is, the more the members will be able to control their emotions and keep them from overrunning their reason. The chief component of the family as a system is the marital partnership. If the marital relationship is healthy and functional, the children have the opportunity to grow. A healthy functional couple commit to each other through the power of will. They decide and choose to stand by each other no matter what for richer or poorer, sickness and in health, until death do them part a good relationship is based on committed love. It's not some maudlin feeling, it's a decision. A healthy functioning relationship is based on equality, the equality of two self-actualizing spiritual beings who connect at the level of their beingness. Each is in the process of becoming a whole person. Each grows because of love for the other. The more dysfunctional a family is, the more rigid the family roles become. In a family shamed by poverty, a child might take on the role of family star 
hero, or heroine in order to give the family a sense of dignity. When parents are irresponsible, an older child often becomes the little parent to his or her brothers and sisters. Lost kids frequently become the good child in the family, conforming and not giving anyone any trouble. Many people sabotage their own chance at happiness or success right at the moment they are within reach. This seemingly illogical behavior is due to the wounded inner child's toxic guilt. What we grow up with is what we come to view as normal. Environments surround us to such a degree we take them for granted. We can only know them when we are out of them. The most powerful and dramatic way of leaving one's family of origin is to do what has been called original pain work. Original pain refers to the early childhood feelings one had to repress either because of the severity of the trauma or because expressing these feelings was dangerous. Feeling our own feelings is the way we break away from the emotional climate of the family. It rarely occurs to people that the reason they are failing in love is because what they believe is love is not love at all. Toxic shame originates outside the person's psyche in their earliest relationships. A king is also a patriarch. Patriarchy is characterized by male domination and power. In patriarchal systems, women and children have no legal rights. Most of recorded human history has been dominated by patriarchy. I want to make it clear that patriarchy is not just about male domination. Patriarchal rules can be administered by women. Many women raised in patriarchal families are as controlling and repressive as their male models. Boys raised by such women can be seriously injured in their sense of masculinity. Families are systems in which every individual is impacted by every other individual. The whole, we could say, is greater has more impact than any combination of its parts. Any disorder in the primary marriage relationship will affect the ability of the other family members to get their needs met. The disorder could relate to poverty, addiction, illness, mental illness, suicide, death, or any other tragedy. Any factor that causes distress in one family member will affect the whole family system. One way to understand what constitutes functionality in a family is by dividing the word responsibility. Being able to respond is an ability. Functional families are created by functional people. Functional people have the ability to respond to each other's feelings, needs, thoughts, and wants. In functional families, all members are allowed to express what they feel, think, need, or want. Problems are dealt with openly and effectively. Our very psychology has been shaken to its foundation that T.O. grasped the meaning of the world today. We use a language created to express the world of yesterday. The life of the past seems to us nearer our true nature, but only for the reason that it is never our language. We now understand that families are dynamic social systems having structural laws, components, and rules. The most important family rules are those that determine what it means to be a human being. These rules embrace the most fundamental beliefs about raising children. What parents believe about human life and human fulfillment governs their way of raising children. The way children are parented forms their core beliefs about themselves. Nothing could be more important. Children are any culture's greatest natural resource. The future of the world depends on our children's conceptions of themselves. All their choices depend on their views of themselves. A crisis exists in the family today. This crisis centers on our parenting rules and the multi-generational process by which families perpetuate these rules. Once a child's inner self is flawed by shame, the experience of self is painful. To compensate, the child develops a false self in order to survive. The false self forms a defensive mask, distracting the true self from its pain and inner loneliness. After years of acting, performing, and pretending, the child loses contact with the true self. That true self is numbed out. 
the false self cover-up makes it impossible to develop self-esteem so the crisis isn't just about how we raise our children it's about a large number of people who look like adults talk and dress like adults but who are actually adult children these adult children often run our schools our churches and our government they also create our families the crisis of adult children raising children who will become adult children families are where we first learn about ourselves in the mirroring eyes of our parents where we see ourselves for the first time in families we learn about emotional intimacy we learn what feelings are and how to express them our parents model what feelings are acceptable and family authorized and what feelings are prohibited 